I want us to talk about Armageddon, the end game, coming up next. <laughs> All right, so like I stated, we're going to talk about Armageddon, the end game. All right, in most recent times, uh, we have seen the uh, unholy alliance of three countries and that have been spoken about in the Bible, or more specifically in Bible prophecy. Uh, these countries are Turkey, Iran, and Russia. Now, they have vowed to work together in Syria to bring about some sort of normalcy to the war-ravaged country while propping up the uh, Syrian uh, president, Bashar al-Assad. Now, I believe that each one of them has a different motive to be in Syria, but without a doubt, Israel and America are definitely a common factor that unites them in this alliance. Now, for the first time in history, these countries are aligning themselves together, which brings us to the topic at hand. Armageddon, the end game. Now, let's look at uh, Ezekiel uh, 38, and we're going to start from verse 1. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and prophesy against him. And say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. And I will turn thee back and put hooks in thy jaws, and I will bring thee forth and all thine army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords, Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya with them, all of them with shield and helmet, Goma and all his bands, the house of Togoma of the north quarters, and all his bands, and many people with thee. Be thou prepared, and prepare for thyself, thou and all thy company that are assembled, assembled unto thee, and be thou a guard unto them. Verse 8. Now, after many days thou shalt be visited in the latter years, thou shalt come into the land that is brought back from the sword, and is gathered out of many people against the mountains, of Israel, which have been always waste, but it is brought forth out of nations, and that they shall dwell safely, all of them. So now we find that God is clearly, has clearly called out these nations to come, to come up against Israel in a time when Israel thinks that she is safe. We are talking about Turkey, Iran, South Sudan, Libya, and Russia. And they will decide to attack with the help of other nations of the world. Now this attack will take place at the end of the seven year tribulation in the valley of Jezreel near the hill called Megiddo. Now we cannot find any reference to the United States being involved in this war, but it is unlikely that the United States of America will not be involved but hopefully they will be involved on the side of Israel and not the other way around. So we see that at the end of the tribulation period, this final war will take place to judge the world for not recognizing Israel as the chosen of God, but also for coming against Israel in battle. Now the Bible says that Jesus himself will fight for Israel as in the Old Testament days. God comes to her rescue definitely now however god is already setting the stage for this encounter as we speak so we have we have found that parts of the euphrates river is definitely drying up and this is the path that will be used 
for this assault. Now, let's look at Israel's relationship with, uh, firstly, South Sudan. Uh, we know that in July of 2011, South Sudan and Israel established bilateral relationship. For the first time, and South Sudan even recognized Israel as a sovereign state. But as of today, I am definitely not sure as to what state that relationship is in. We do know, however, that the human rights situation in South Sudan is not good. And just um, probably about two weeks ago, uh, security forces killed some 127 protesters and injured some 700 more. So it seems that the dictatorship style rule continues in this country. And you know what? At the end of the day, they will be a part of that coalition that comes against Israel. So South Sudan is definitely going to be a part of this, um, this whole setup um, as the countries um, align themselves coming against Israel. And we've got next up Iran. This country also uh, recognized Israel as a sovereign state and even at one time had very close ties with Israel. But we know today that this relationship no longer exists. Iran is a major supporter of Hezbollah in Syria, and I believe also in Lebanon. However, the fact that Iran has been working on developing nuclear weapons is a very big concern for many people, including the United States and Israel. Uh, but not long ago, uh, we had uh, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad. Ama Ahmadinejad, sorry, the former uh, president called for the annihilation of Israel, and he did that on several occasions. So, you know, we know that definitely there is no lo love lost uh, between those two uh, countries. And uh, like I stated before, the stage is set uh, for this final confrontation, and uh, Iran or Iran would be one of those countries that would be coming up against Israel. We also have uh, Turkey, which was the first Muslim-majority country to recognize the state of Israel and had formal ties with them um, as some Israelis would vacation in what was a very secular Turkey at the time. Now, Israel and Turkey had both military and business ties for some time, which strains in, uh, but what strained the relationship, I think back in uh, 2008 uh, was the um, Gaza war and, and again during uh, 2010, when um, you have the what they call the, the Gaza uh, flotilla raid, um, which is most recent. And so Turkey has issues with, with, um, with, with Israel. And we find that even, uh, what was his name, President um, Erdogan uh, threatened to break off diplomatic ties with, the, uh, with Israel uh, if the U.S. recognized Jerusalem as the capital of Israel which President Trump did anyway back in 2017. So I'm not certain as to what um, transpired after that. And then I, we have, I think last but not least, we have got, well, not last, we have got Russia. Russia has an embassy in Tel Aviv and a consulate in Haifa. And Israel, in turn, has an embassy in Moscow. And they have a, a, a consulate general to open up um, pretty soon if it hasn't opened already. So we see that uh, so far Israel does have ties with the countries named in Scripture that will launch this invasion. We also know that Vladimir Putin, the Russian president, is pro-Israel, but also most recently he threatened to take action if Israel defended itself against rocket strikes coming out of Syria. How ridiculous is that? However, this puts Israel's back uh, against the wall, and we know that Israel does not take likely to threats. So let's see what happens in the future. Right, now we have come to the last one. The last but not least is Libya. Now, the late uh, Muammar Gaddafi, he um, adamantly called for um, the, the uh, annihilation of, of Israel during his 40-year rule. So he always talked about the, the, the Zionist enemy uh, should be destroyed. But however, he secretly reached out to, to uh, the state of Israel many times, it seems. Uh, one of those times, 1992, when um, the UN was imposing, um, was supposed to impose a sanction on Libya for, for the downing of the Panam jet over Lockerbie, Scotland, was one of those times 
when Libya tried to get Israel to lobby the UN on its behalf. However, it is safe to assume that there are those in Libya that still hold to that very same sentiment that Israel must be destroyed. So we see Israel does not have a lot of love in this world. Now, we see reason for the hostility, notwithstanding how most of the world feels about the Palestinian um, conflict and how Israelis go about handling that some of the times. And also, to the right to Jerusalem is another hot topic. And so many are against Israel because they don't believe that Israel um, has a, a right to Jerusalem, which is absolutely strange given their, their historical uh, um, um, ties to, to Jerusalem and the, the, the historical um, information that is there concerning um, Israel's um, birth, Israel's, uh, even in the, in, the, in the Old Testament, when you look at Israel's history, and um, Israel, uh, there is no Israel without Jerusalem, as far as I can tell you, and according to Scripture. So I believe that the, the East, and you keep looking in the East, that, that is the time clock for what's going to happen in the end, end times. You've got to pay attention to what's happening in um, the East because Bible prophecy is definitely going to be fulfilled coming out of the East um, most definitely. However, we need to keep uh, praying for Israel that they would recognize Yeshua as Messiah before it is too late but no matter what happens this war this end war this end game armageddon the end game will take place well let me thank you for watching this video um, i want you to go ahead and subscribe if you have not done so already click the bell icon for notification that you will not miss any new videos that are posted also share uh, like and leave your comments all right remember there is freedom in truth. I am William Nelson Ryan, and I am saying shalom, and may the peace of God be with you until next time.